And now focus turns again on football. Yeah, it does, yeah. It's where chief scouts and, you know, directors can relax for a little bit now, can't they, for a few weeks, certainly, and wait for the January window. Sunderland throw. I think we might see a little bit more of that today as well. When Portsmouth have spells on the ball, Miende's got to be willing to, to run in behind and try and drag the centre backs about a little bit. So again, just trying to find Mundell. You can hear the atmosphere, good atmosphere in Fratton Park, as we said earlier, wasn't it? Do get behind their team down there. Only lost five games all of last season, winning the League One Championship, 97 points. Yeah, themselves, Derby, Oxford, wasn't it? Went through the playoffs, getting up. Gone out, Sunderland throw. Yeah, so look, obviously the centre backs. It looks like Luke's come across that left side. Naturally, Adji plays there, doesn't he, with his left foot? But Dan Ballard coming in at the right hand side, and Luke's just moved across to the left. Headed away by Trey Hume there. You know, sometimes with, the, with these type of pitches where it feels like it's compact and the, the crowd are on top of it, some of the Craven Cottage, one or two others, it feels like the pitch is, is smaller and can be a bit frantic at times. So sometimes you may not think you've got as, as much time as you usually have on some of the bigger, you know, back at the stadium of light and the pitch feels massive. Um, especially, say, Portsmouth, you'd expect them to start bright and be on the front foot and not allow us to try and settle in as the away team. Anthony Patterson yet to concede a goal this season in the league. Coming into this as a defensive unit as well, Danny. They'll be wanting to keep that record as well, won't yeah, you? Yeah, as long as you can, of course. Yeah, exactly that. And I've seen one or two of the games towards the end where the opposition have had a half chance or two. And, you know, as, form, as a former defender, you want to keep that clean sheet intact. Whether, you, you know, I think it was Sheffield Wednesday, Smith had the chance late on and had have been furious, Luke 09. And, Adji back there, you've grafted all game and going into the last minute you don't want to concede a goal. Got to keep on top of the boys in front yet. Jordan Williams is a forward. Looking for the run of Matt Ritchie there. He's trying to forward early, aren't they? Portsmouth early on his seat. Balls in behind. Dre Hume. Roberts. The ball. Oh, the ball's found its way through to, to Brown and Brown. Yeah. And does get himself around oh, and he might it. get it back from the keeper here but the referees blows his whistle <laughs> well, it was there to be won yeah and then does Alan Brown just fall on top of him not sure but a little bit of a panic from the goalkeeper but it was good wasn't it in the build up as I said there earlier on and yes Alan Brown's gone in there and you expect him to generally sit in front but you can see him there he wants to get forward I think it's, yeah, it's handball isn't it and uh, I think it's Joe who's just sat in for him a little bit deeper Fortunate the keeper, you could say Alan Brown's a couple of yards away and he smashed it at him. His arm is out though, to be fair, isn't it? Yeah, it was a good ball, it was it Patrick Roberts, wasn't it? He just come off that, that right hand side, just fizzed the lovely ball into, into Alan Brown.
Fowler just goes back to Norris. Ogilvy. Just seen Marlon Park there as he played it back, just to his centre backs, move the ball quicker, don't take too long on the ball. Good steal there by Ramin Mundell. Surrounded by blue shirts though. Yeah, he was two or three, and it's Sadie, isn't it? The centre forward getting back. He's a big unit, isn't he? The size of him there, big strong lad. But Christian Sadie can play as a, as a winger as well, or yeah. as, a, as a number 10. Just being asked to do a job up top, but well, it worked out okay last week, didn't it, with a couple of goals against Middlesbrough. Nine's gone down holding his face yeah, there. So yeah. yeah, do you know what's, it's interesting? I'm just looking at the setup and all three of our centre midfielders have pushed really high. You see Joe Allen Brown and Chrissy Rigg are over the halfway line there. Now I'm looking at Luke 09, more Luke's side as well. Duncan, you know, he's a bit more physical, but I'm just saying there, look, the size of Sadie, and you don't want too many balls clipped into him there. You see it here now, we've pushed on there. It's a little clip into him. He's a big, strong boy. You see Luke there, he wants to gamble and get round him. I think it, it possibly is a foul, you know, he's trying to pin Luke, it just gets his arm a little bit high around his face on that occasion. But Luke's going to want a, a screener, whether it's Joe or Alan Brown, who, who are in that role at that moment, one of them's got to screen it and cut those balls out into his feet, his, into his chest. Too sure what's happening here, that's the... The goalkeeper who needs some attention. Oh, cheek there, come up. Well, I wonder if that was the collision between himself and Alan, Alan Brown. Brown. Yeah, I think so. It's one of them in boxing, where they get the iron out, isn't it? Because if that's closing up, down. he'll have to be replaced, and they've got it's Nicholas like Schmidt on the bench. Let's have another Let's look have at look. this, Danny, see if you can see something. Yeah. Yeah, do you know what, I think it's an accidental one, isn't it? And Alan Brown there, say, not sure what's going on there as the ball's clattered into him and he just comes together with the goalkeeper. Norris, isn't it? Yeah, says he's OK to carry on. Well, he might all right be to now, but that was only a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. That's swelling pretty badly, isn't it? Yeah, they'll just keep an eye on it for five minutes, won't they? So it's one of them if he gets an elbow on it again. Set piece or you know comes out to claim one could open it up. Job on the stretch as well finds the ball with Chris Rigg. Nyan. So again, Lundell. The slips as he plays the ball and Mundell keeps it in. You see, it's been quite scrappy early on, hasn't it? It's been stop start with uh, a few fouls and one or two incidents, but Sunderland trying to get control of the game now. Roberts. Stop and look. I think Joe's playing in the deeper role actually, isn't he? Alan Brown's more advanced, certainly. Up there alongside Chris Rigg. Gilby wins possession back for Portsmouth. Silvira skips away with it. Dazelle, taking the ball deep, encouraging his teammates to step up with it. 
Yeah, just ball speed, isn't it, really? You see, move it a little bit quicker. You see that with Pack earlier on as well. Try and get a tempo early on. Sunderland not pressing as they have done in recent games, Danny. No, well, just come to the sort of formations in a minute, really free kick given away there, and then Mundell. But yeah, with them, them 4 2 3 1 and us in a 4 3 3, really, the midfields are almost matched up, aren't they? Both Joe, uh, sorry, Alan Brown and Chris Rigg locked on to Dazelle and Pack. Spearman is the centre backs this afternoon, really. Remain Mundell not too happy, really decision but I think it was a free kick and Matt Ritchie and Alan Pack stood over it Gilby with the head out. Yeah, difficult, wasn't it? Ball in from uh, Matt Ritchie with the left foot in swing. And well, Ogilvy, he's almost edge of the box, isn't he? Got to try and glance it and get some purchase on it, really. And it's comfortable for Anthony Patterson. You see it there. He's on the way down as well. He's about 15 yards out or so. Pressure better, isn't it? You say getting a little bit higher. Hume heads it on to Patrick Roberts, and Hume stretches to get there but doesn't. Silvira. He's managed to pull one back here. Oh, yeah, just get caught out there. Langer's in it. I think it is getting to the byline. Matt Ritchie was the intended target. Yeah, we get ourselves in a bit of a mess on that far side between Trey Hume and Patrick Roberts. You can see there, Lang. Trey knows he can't make the challenge, he's wrong side. In case he catches his heels. And Luke O'Nine just in the right spot to put it behind for the corner. It's a short one, it is delivered. Hume sprinting to get there first, goes inside. Possession goes back. Andrew Dizel plays it forward, gets it back. Portsmouth are unsure in there, Marlon Potty's looking to play forward, he hasn't got a pass on and then it's a little bit of a loose one doesn't he to uh, is it Swanson I think. Sirkin. Mundell goes back. Ballard who gets some minutes for the under-23s under the other night. With Appleton. Yeah, he did, yeah. That was the first 45 he played, didn't he? Roberts. Digs out a pass for Mundell. Some space here, Mundell. Now Richie ahead of him. Roberts. Charged down. Yeah, see Matt Richie there. He just wants somebody to get a little bit tighter for Romain Mundell. It's the first time he's received the ball where he's got 10, 15 yards of space. And once actually Patrick Roberts comes across the pitch to join in. Here he is again. 
Job. Mundo. Brown. Roberts. Job thinks about it. Alan Brown. Suddenly trying to use their width again. This is Chris Rigg. Left foot across. Ball. Oh, the circle was arriving. Yeah. Do you know what? Does it, I feel like he leaves it there, Dennis. It's a lovely ball and they work it well, Sunderland. Patient in the build up. That's that man again, Dennis, getting himself into the box. I'm not sure. I thought he was almost underneath the flight of it. Didn't, didn't time his jump. But it was a lovely ball in from Chris Rigg. Regis Labrice looks on. Circuit. Trying to find Mundell. Cut out by Swanson. Yeah, good from the end there, getting across. Better from Sunderland the last few minutes, a bit more tempo to them. Not sure if that went in play. Yeah, that's Linesman's his flag up there, down below us. Tight angle for our friend, the EFL cameraman. <laughs> Durkin's pass didn't find the intended target, but thankfully bounces off Christian Sadi. We just a breeze right on top of that one. It does pretty much do the full 90 on the edge of that technical area, yeah. doesn't it? So a lot of managers or head coaches tend to these days, don't they? Not often take a seat. He hasn't done a BLC yet, he hasn't got a bucket out. Four games in there. Richie. Need passes, but they couldn't get rid of it. Brown. Mundell. Job has got a bit of space around him. Plays it into Chris Rigg. Someone building something here. Mundo. Just like to drift in on his right foot. Roberts. Hume takes a player away. Roberts. Oh. One, two minds there, maybe. Yeah, it's Dennis Serkin. I think uh, Romain Mumble actually picked up a nice little pocket of space there in the centre. You see Patrick now, yet. Yeah. Just fed it into it, Romain there, into his feet. It's been a decent enough start, though, without testing the goalkeeper so far. We've had a couple of passages of play similar to that, and we've worked it quite well across the pitch. Just looking for the opening. Job goes back to Dan Ballard. Suddenly get possession straight back. A couple of loose passes We've had a couple in the of middle. Sadie as well, isn't it? Dennis had one as well a few minutes ago. Just fired it straight at him. Nine. Captain this afternoon. Dan Neal's. Without Dan Neal, of course, because of that suspension. Uh, 
bit loose from Sunderland Oof. again, but Serkin's there to keep it in. Well, Mundell's oh. shirt was definitely getting pulled. Yeah, well, he, do you know what? He's arguing it there, Swanson. No need, though. Remain Mundell's going nowhere on the touchline. Back to goal. Cheap free kick. Big shift there from Luke Nyan. It's founded it the well. intended target as well. And Roberts is still going. It opens up for the shot. Oh. Slices it a bit. It does, yeah. Lovely switch, isn't it, from Luke O'Neill's left foot as well. Finds Patrick and that's what he wants there up against Ogilvy. Driving inside. It opened up for him lovely as well. Just couldn't control the strike. Nine nine there, Ogilvy, yeah, nine. loses his foot in. Pat comes across. Doesn't show him down the line. And then, yeah, he'd be disappointed. He almost stabs at it, really, there, Patrick. Rig felt that one. Marlon Pack. Serkin with the chest. Swanson's touch tight. Yeah. On Mundell. So, what he's got to do that, just put the brakes on there by the free kick. You know, ball into his feet, he's tight again. under that one Lang keeps it alive Gordon Williams felt that there come for the corner yeah, and then being patient looking for the opening aren't they there Portsmouth to thread balls in and in the end it's ball down the line and Swanson makes the run forward down the channel it's a combination of Luke O'Neill and Alan Brown coming across but behind for the corner a little huddle there at Portsmouth players taking up that position free in the six yard box to go and aggressively head it and there he does back in from Richie <sighs> deep delivery to the delight yeah. of the Sunderland but fans. it is at the end he's got to stay switched on you see there it's his man Williams the two second phase be alert to it gets caught wrong side it's fortunate that the cross is too deep to Sunderland fans just letting Matt Ritchie know there about his former club <laughs> Ballard stepping out still he was clipped there just before yeah, he played couple, it yeah he's just feels he's clipped on his ankles isn't he, he goes to play the ball Plays it out of play on the far side. Referee waves it away. will be frustrated Portsmouth so far you've know, got the two sitters in there looking to try and play their way through us and they've struggled so far 
Which I thought was a Sunderland throw, it is, yeah. forward has to go back yeah, just needs a little bit of movement ahead of him down the line there Dennis be asking for Meander just to come out there show for him Mundell goes inside gets it back of Serkin from Towler. Second with the flick. about the forward ball. This one goes inside. Brown was asking for a free kick there. He thought Sadie was a bit clumsy. Portsmouth come out the other side. Silvera. Rig breaks it up only momentarily. Then Serkin intercepts it. He's looking to get Mayenda away. Mayenda has got round the other side of the defender, but he couldn't take control of the ball. Yeah, do you know what he's done well initially, hasn't he? Got between the two centre backs. Good ball from Dennis over the top. And then as he's looked to pull the trigger, is he off balance? I'm not sure. I think there's not too many options on to play a pass to. And the opportunity goes away. but not very convincingly by Norris. Packs there. Yeah, I'm not sure that's a pass. I think it's a good badden, isn't it, from Norris yeah. to defeat a pack. The Zell, wasn't it, in the first place? The loose pass. See this one back now. Does really well initially here now. Then, yeah, gets himself wrong side. Do you know what? He's, yeah, he's got a bit of his shirt. He's asking for it, Meander, I think... Once he gets in there, you know, be big and horrible and shrug him off it and get your strike away if you can. Foul on Job there. It's on a free kick. What he has done there, though, Meander, is showed the two centre backs, I've got the better of you in a foot race, yep. falling behind. Now they be might just mind. drop a little bit deeper now, yeah. Don't to give him too much space in behind. mind it yeah sometimes it can be ugly you know you want to play all the pretty football but at times when it gets a bit tight Dan Ballard there you just saying to you striker come on get down the channel and again the centre back what can he do Towler there just puts it out of play gets us up the pitch can we build in there final third now Trey Hume 
can take a thaw in. Roberts is moving. Ballard on nine. from Sunderland. Roberts gives it back to Trey Hume. Chris Rigg now with the ball. Finds Trey Hume again. Hume puts it across. Mayenda! Oh. Oh. And it's oh. gone in! It's an own goal! It's an own goal! Straight off the chest of Swanson. Well, I was just about to say what a goal that would have been. Lovely build-up play down the right-hand side. Trey Hume involved Patrick Roberts into Mayenda. Good strike with his right foot. Good save by the keeper, but then they've got themselves in a mess, Portsmouth. It's cannoned off. Swanson and it's in the back of the net and it's 1-0 Sunderland well let's look at this again because Portsmouth get themselves into a bit of bother a great build-up play as you yeah, say yeah Chris Rigg involved as well and then it's a decent strike keeper saves it and then Bang. it's Williams isn't it straight into the chest of Swanson can't do nothing about it you know credit to Sunderland lovely build-up play patient down that right-hand side and oh it's horrible isn't it from their point of view Trey gets his head up there, Meander, good connection on it with his right foot. Do you know what, it's one of them you take it, you're in front. Probably shaded at Sunderland as well, to be honest, haven't they? Portsmouth offered very little going forward, Sunderland had a few build-ups. Well, this means Portsmouth are going to have to come forward more, aren't they? I think yeah. at times they've been quite happy to sit and condense themselves I think, in the middle I think of they're it. unsure how to play, looking at them. I said there, you've got Sadie up top, who's a big unit. They've been reluctant at times to you know, just clip little ball balls in. in. So yeah. We've got shell it up to around his head, but just clip balls in because we've pressed him quite high. Dazelle and Pack have tried to get on it, and the centre backs as well looking to thread balls in. Not too many options. And they've had very little joy playing through us so far. But as I say, they've been reluctant to just clip little balls into, into Lang or into Sadie and build from you know Sunderland's final third. Well, Zap Swanson. Won't want to celebrate that one, but it will go down as a proper old-fashioned own goal, that one. Yeah, one of them, isn't it, on the, the old video nasties? I think the referees give a foul there against Matt, Matt Ritchie, I think. It was just a coming together between him and Dennis Serkin. Let's see if we see it back here now. But yeah, Matt Ritchie on his left foot looking to bend another ball into the Sunderland box. Marlon Pack coming across as well. Make sure we're organised and picking up in there. You see one or two. I'm look behind them. We'll bring you all the scores from around the championship at half time. Marlon Pack drops the ball in. It's not cleared yet for Sunderland. Silvera over the top. Yeah, defend the first one. Okay, don't we? Get a bit on it and then it drops to Silvera. You know he wants to chop inside on his favoured right foot, but he can't control the strike. Well, Watford don't play until tomorrow, so Sunderland could open a bit of a gap for a few hours. It's only 24 at least, if they were successful this afternoon. Taken quickly, Mundell. Sirkin. Brown. Dan Ballard. You can see Ballard back out there for Sunderland's first team. Got that injury, yeah, of course, in pre-season. Yeah, straight he wouldn't eat for a few weeks there Dan Ballard had a steady 35 minutes hasn't he really tested too much defensively a lot of these areas where he's having time to receive it and get his head up look for a pass come on Chris Rigg yeah now Roberts keeps on coming Roberts was waiting for the 
contact, I think. Mayenda doing well himself. Roberts, back to Mayenda. Was he offside? The assistant says no. So let's have a throw That's in. Good. It's good again, Chris Riggin. See Patrick drop down there on the on the far side, and then Dan Ballard again drops a lovely ball into Chris Rigg. We've seen him already when, when he's playing those eight positions. He likes that little run into the channel. They end up looking for Rigg. Three players on. Roberts. Oh, nice nutmeg from Roberts. Job on the edge. Roberts gets it back. Brings in Chris Rigg. Sunderland have a corner. Yeah, it's good. What they're doing as well to pick it up second balls, you see. I think it was the Sheffield Wednesday game we went back to where time and time again we were getting on top through picking up second balls, loose balls. You just see Paul Smith a little bit rattled since the goal and disorganised. Interesting. Sunderland doing a bit of a sort of congregation. Of the yeah. They, yeah. Yeah, someone to to peel out to that back post, get somebody free. We've been working on this, obviously. Here he comes. It's a short one. Mundell. Sirkin. Brown. Clips one in. Ballard stayed forward. He was onside. Much to the disappointment of oh, those pops. Just popped up off from a Mundell there. Yeah, no, one or two weren't happy. I think he's timed his run round the back there. Dan Ballard. Working hard to get back. Sadie. He's going nowhere there, but he swings a leg around it. Goal kick. It's been interesting, hasn't it, the opening 38 minutes or so? There hasn't been really any dynamic moments to the Not game. really, no. I think we've had general better control of the game than Portsmouth. They've, they've huffed and puffed, really, haven't they? As I said there, they've struggled to, to, to create any opportunities, final third, any build-up play. And we've certainly worked it better in the opposition's half, albeit yeah, we haven't created too many opportunities so far. But I think Regis Labrie and the coaching staff will be absolutely delighted down on the touchline. Hume, Rig, spins one forward for Patrick Roberts, it gives it back to Trey Hume, Roberts, oh, oh lovely ball, clever. Brown! Has the flag gone up? It has, yeah. It's a lovely inverted ball though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, he fakes, pull the trigger doesn't he there, he's a little reverse pass into the path of Alan Brown. One of those if it comes off, wow. Yeah, good view of it here now. Let's have a look there. Let's keep an eye on Alan Brown. And yeah, he's, ooh, yeah, you've got the trailing boot there, haven't you? We've got obviously the VAR and the lines to come up there, but benefit of the doubt to the linesman. Pack. Williams. Richie. Towler. Smith finding themselves with possession in these situations yeah. quite a lot and they're not, just and not then doing do that, anything yeah, yeah sort of caught in between trying to play I mean obviously I'm guessing they're working on the training ground trying to get it into pack and trying to get it into Dazelle and then you can see the two of them there just shifting five ten yards trying to get a little bit of space find a pocket but they can't we're pressing them high we're locked on and then eventually they just revert to, to going long and it's sails through to, to Dan Ballard and Luke O'Neill and Anthony Patterson yeah we barely mentioned we're, Callum Lang and Sadie and Dazelle have we no they had that sort of one half opening, didn't they, on the far side where Lang got into the into the 18-yard box. It's loose from Dan Ballard. Here's Lang now. Back. Richie. On his left foot. Fence again. Richie still going. 
floats all the way through town to Patterson. Yeah, took a deflection, took the sting out of it as well. Yeah, just got to be careful and safe. Look after the ball. One or two yeah. loose passes across the back. There's one thing I would say: don't invite them back into the game. There was being a little bit careless on the ball. Thirty-four now, Matt Ritchie. Start his career at Portsmouth. That's right, yeah, good stint at Bournemouth as well, didn't he? Ready how? Marlon Pack, 33, also started his career at Portsmouth. Both back to where it all began. From Onion. Sadie finds Richie. Williams. Swanson all the way back to Norris. Headed out. Was it out? Still in. Still in. Everyone's stopped. Let's give it away. He's Brown for Sunderland. Alan Brown looking for Mayenda. Who might get there? Left foot. Is that gone for the corner? Yes, it, it has. Was, uh, it was Callum Lang, wasn't it? He'd done well initially to win the ball back in his own half, but then gives it straight to Alan Brown. Wasn't a lot on it. Was getting tight for him. You see it now. He just tries to slip it in behind into the path of Mayenda. Eventually onside. gets there. Difficult one for him coming away from goal. And then Swanson, isn't it, gets the block in. Anthony Patterson just having a quick word with goalkeeping coach Alessandro Bacrini. Well, six yard box is loaded, isn't it? Just a bit. The outswinger though, Patrick Roberts stood over it. Rig jumps, Brown should pick up the scraps. So then still forward as Chris Rigg takes the ball. Looks for the cross, Serkin's the intended target. Chris, he overruns it there. I think it's Marlon Pack, isn't it? Meander. Sure me there, but I thought it was Chris Rigg. I think it's Meander. Let's have a look. Yeah. After Pack plays the ball. Yeah, now. Oh, no, it's Chris Rigg, yeah. But Chris Rigg, yeah. Cameraman's picking up Meander there. Uh, he overruns it slightly there, Marlon Pack, and just invites the challenge from Chris Rigg. A little bit unlucky. First booking of the afternoon. Hume falls heavily there. A minute left of normal time in this first half. Forget you can have your say about the transfer window if you like. Use the hashtag Ask Danny. And we'll bring up your thoughts in the post game program, of course. We'll look around at half time at all the scores from around the championship. There was those three earlier games as well. We'll look at those results. And of course, we'll discuss the game so far here on SAFC Live. Sunderland winning 1 0 at the moment down at Fratton Park. Ballard, no nine coming together. Try and deal with this one. Ballard touches it, but I think he's got the benefit of the doubt there. Yeah, he's trying to see it out of play. It's Lang, isn't it? Just clips his ankles, I think. He's not happy. Frustrated, isn't he, Callum Lang? There, you see it back now. Dan Ballard just trying to see it out for a goal kick. Oh. <laughs> I think he's done well there, Dan Ballard. I say he's bought one. Two minutes will be added on. 
Cleveland Ricardo's board goes up. It's about right, isn't it? We had that one stoppage, didn't we, with the keeper? With his eye. And from Patterson. Job. He's circling. He just gets caught a bit with the ball under his feet. Urgency when Portsmouth get the ball, even though they're a goal down, Danny. They don't really know yeah. how to play the game, do they? At the yeah, now a little bit more of that's what they're looking for, really. Try and get balls into the Sadie's feet, and build off him. It's better by them. This is Richie. Some space here for Williams. Dazelle. Ogilvy drops it to the left. Silvera. He lets it go out. Yeah, good. Just runs it there, Silvera into Trey Hume. Just bumps him off it. So that pretty much be that, won't it? Yep, they'll be happy with what they've seen in the first half. Yeah, I'd probably say we found ourselves in front at a canter, really. You know, not at the levels we've seen in the last couple of home games. But sometimes you don't need to be, you know, we've played within ourselves. We've had a few moments, yes, in and around their 18-yard box. Build-up play's been good in general. Confirmation of Chris Riggs' yellow card. And that's that, done it. Yeah. Half-time then, down at Fratton Park. Join us uh, at half-time, where we'll look back through the moments. You know, yeah, we created one or two sort of openings, some build-up play, especially down the right-hand side. Uh, and then the goal almost summed it up, really, didn't it? The own goal in the end from Portsmouth, get themselves in a little bit of a mess. But we'll take it. Absolutely will. Some of the fans watching around the world, of course, as well on SAFC Live. Take part in the post-game programme. Use the hashtag AskDanny. Tell us what you think about the transfer window. Tell us what you think about today's performance, of course of which we still have 45 minutes to go. We just saw Brees will probably want to see more efforts on goal in the second half. Uh, there's a few times we, we spoke about it when we were looking back at the first half at halftime where there was opportunities for the ball to be put through. Yeah. Maybe you want some more of that. Just mix it up a bit. Yeah, I, th I thought in a way we did. I said Dan Ballo played a couple of nice balls down the channel. Dennis played one in behind, you know. Meander was willing to run, almost got himself in behind. You know, we know we're all about playing those little cute passes, give and goes. We've seen it as well down the right-hand side in the first half. But, yeah, sometimes mix it up. And if you've got someone up front who's, who's sharp, here he goes again. He's almost in. Well, Job striding forward with the ball. It's ended up at the feet of Romain Mundell. Goes onto his left-hand side. Does he win the corner? Referee says goal kick right in front of the Southern fans who disagree. Yeah, uh, Romain Mundell does as well, but it was an almost, wasn't it? I was just saying there, Meander nearly gets in between the two centre-backs. It's the four, isn't it, that comes across there? Towler. Towler. Then remain. Let's have a look. Oh, do you know what? I think it comes off Swanson's right boot there for the corner. Brown spins on it. Didn't get the intended contact. They scored five goals on their travel so far. Three at Leeds, two at Middlesbrough. And the blank in the nil-nil draw with Luton so far at home. Just looking in that first half, didn't, didn't look like creating many opportunities, did they? And Sadie got so. two in the last game, but he hasn't had touch inside our area, really, has he? No, he's been busy. He's been putting himself about and doing the, the hard yards off the ball. But, you know, at the end of the day, you want your centre-forward 
creating, getting some opportunities in the in the 18-yard box, and he's had nothing to go on so far. Well, the free kick does come eventually for Alan Brown. You know, see Marlon packing almost saying to the ref, "Don't give it, don't give it." He stood right in front of him. He does well. He wriggles out of it. Alan Brown. You see now, nice bit of skill, foot on the ball in there. And I'm not sure if it's Dizel, maybe. Dizel's got his arms on him. The referee gave them every opportunity to not foul them. And in the end, enough was enough. Mayenda using his body well and dropping it off to Chris Rigg. Here's Roberts now for Sunderland. Inside the area, Roberts. Nothing comes of it. Oh, coming together is it 9 and Ballard coming together there? <laughs> Both committed, weren't they? Ended up competing for it. But again, good play from Mayenda. Excellent hold-up play, wasn't it? Just backing into the centre-back. Really good. Under looking for Sirkin. Williams has stayed down. There was much in that, but the referee might want to have a word with Dennis Sirkin here. I, see about, I just think Dennis is going to get booked. It's off camera, I'm not sure. Yeah, he wants a word with him. I just think he goes to block the ball as Williams goes to clear it there. Talking to from the referee. Flat ball out from the goalkeeper. They do keep possession. Job felt that one. I do feel there is quite a lot of space in that midfield if someone were to get on the ball. Pack. Williams. There's Richie. Play really close together, don't they? Gazelle and Pack. You see Pack drops between the centre backs as well at times, trying to get on it. Samuel Silvera. Goes between two Sunderland players. Can't get past Job though. Rig under pressure. Lovely oh, stuff well. from Chris Rig. Releases Alan Brown. Brown goes to the right. This is Patrick Roberts. Goes on to his right foot. Pulls one back. Mayenda. Oh. Heavy touch, it's, but it still it's goes there. in. Do you know what? I think it might be Alan Brown, is it? Gets the last touch. Let's have a look. Well, Mayenda's running away. <laughs> he wants it. <laughs> I'll see it back. I'm not happy about something there, Portsmouth. Starts from Patrick Roberts. Does well, doesn't he? Goes on his right foot. Fizzes a ball across. Mayenda takes a touch. Gets away from him, and then he... Sure, whether it's him that toes it past the keeper or Alan Brown was on the floor as well. He kind of ran the opposite direction, didn't he? So anyway, let's see. 2 0 Sunderland. We'll see it back on the replay now. Alan Brown's having a laugh about it as well. Now they'll have a little chat. Let's have a look now. I'm sure what they're not happy about, Portsmouth. Let's have Patrick drives into the 18 yard box, goes on the outside, fizzes it across. Alan Brown has the first go at it. They're asking for offside, but it's certainly not. They've got two men on the line. Two men on the line behind the keeper as well. Does, does Alan Brown get the final touch here? I think he does. Let's have a look there. Gets away from Mienda and there. Bang. And Alan Brown, I think he does. He toes it home, doesn't he? <laughs> we'll see it now. <laughs> They're going to argue this one afterwards. Here we go. We'll have a look. Get ready. And then, yeah, yeah. he does. It's Alan Brown's goal. I'm sorry, Mienda. <laughs> I think he needed that, though. Because yeah, they did I have cover. Does. Let's have a look sure whether it's anyway you've got to see it over the line and he does Alan Brown he's <laughs> on the floor and he toes it home right we're giving it to Brown well, Alan Brown's goal all day <laughs> 2 nil to Sunderland that's the most important thing here well, we've given it to Alan Brown on the evidence of the replay Someone in the gallery has given us Mayenda. Yeah, again, we've got the benefit of seeing it on the on the replay, haven't we, a couple of times as well. 
but he's been good this afternoon, my end. Fair play to him that his hold up play has been good. He's been busy running in behind, mixing his game up. He was frustrated with the first goal as well, wasn't he? Good connection with his right foot and good save by the keeper. And then that one there, it just gets away from him. Well, that's the thing. If he took his first touch better, there would yeah, be no it doubt. For him to, yeah. to slot it home, yet. Yeah. Oh, lovely from Chris Rigg. Sunderland coming alive here in the second half. Roberts involved again. It was his cross with his right foot as well. Rigg pings the ball across the field to Ramin Mundell. Bit of tempo coming in from Sunderland now. As Job tries to spin on it, he's dispossessed. See, he hasn't got the pace and Job gets back goal side. And then Sunderland easily take possession back, but give it away quite sloppily. Sadi. Yeah, well yeah, he makes up for his mistake. Did he might have stayed down there. There was no pace really with that opportunity perhaps, which presented itself to Portsmouth there. Sunderland able to get back on the ball. Yeah, yeah do you know what? I would say we had a couple in the first half where we were a little bit loose with, with square passes and we looked like their best avenue back into the game. We've just got to be careful, make sure we're tidy on the ball. Another example of how good Patrick Roberts is at the moment, though, going on the right-hand side as well. Well, everybody knows about Patrick and what, do you want, what does he want to do? He wants to drive at you and he wants to chop on, on his favoured left foot, doesn't he? But just show the full-back you're willing to go on the outside and he's done exactly that. And he fires a lovely ball across with his right foot as well. Squares it, doesn't he? Good bit of pace on it. And it just, as you say, just gets away from Mayenda a yard or two, then he's on the stretch. I think it's, that, that only really happens as well because Alan Brown himself yeah, misconnected. He, went, he, went, he yeah. went for the first one, yeah. But he's getting in there, isn't he? And again, we thought he was going to be playing deeper there now. Here you go, you see it back now. It's not upside, it's got the keeper there. And yeah, he's got, it's definitely Brown's goal, yeah. He's got Dazelle, isn't it? I think it is on the touchline. They're all looking at the linesman, thinking he's offside. The defenders not. on the line weren't. <laughs> yeah. The only one not asking for the, uh, yeah. for the offside. Great challenge from Luke O'Neill. Portsmouth have the ball still. Pack, Lang, big challenge in the middle, Chris Rigg it is who gets it back for Sunderland, this is Mayenda, he's got Mundell to the left, Trey Hume coming in the shot now as well, Mundell, left footed, goal, 3-0 Sunderland, comes, the comes from Chrissy Rigg, great challenge in the middle of the park, on Callum Lang I think it is, and it's that and man the again, counter, that's what it's all about on the counter attack, getting bodies forward, Mayenda does well, gets his head up, picks his pass, into Romain Mundell, touch out of his feet, and then bang through the keeper. 2 0, 3 0, sorry, 3 0, Sunderland. And you would think that would be game over. Well, this is not just an unprecedented start to the season for Sunderland AFC. This also could be a league record as well. So it's on Dazelle, isn't it? Chris Rigg, good challenge, wins the ball, does well here. Meander slows it up, assesses his options, out to Mundell, touch it with his right foot. Next one's with his left foot through the keeper, Norris. Here, yeah, just gets away from Dazelle, doesn't it? And good challenge from Chris Rigg. He's on to him. See there, look, he's looking like he's going to go out to the right-hand side. Draws in the centre-back, isn't it? The four, Towler. And then there. Yeah, keeper perhaps thinks he's going to go across him there. Not strong enough with his right hand. Again, we don't mind it. It's in the back of the net. And Sunderland in a great position. And Sunderland look a bit different in the second half. Certainly seen the opportunity in front of them. Just watch this. As Luke Nine clears it. There was a couple of big challenges in that move, wasn't there? Just before Chris Rigg made his. Yeah, there were, yeah. Luke Nine was involved. He did, he made a good challenge. A few of the Pompey fans were asking for a free kick. Not one of the players, he timed it really well, Luke. Portsmouth fans are trying to rouse their side. 
Three nil down at home though. Sunderland at the top of the league as they go into coming up to the we're not even at the hour mark yet. Yeah, good cushion to have, isn't it? But still, you know, carry on if opportunities are there. Go and take them on the counter. Well, a quadrupler. You better get busy with your pen, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> There's all sorts happening. A couple of new signings down there as well. I noticed uh, the one was there. Paddy Lane was there. Mark O'Mahony. Saw him. Abdullah Kamara was getting dressed too. John Racino seemingly having to do something. He's going to make four changes at once. Yeah, you can see why as well. I've not been at it at all, have they, Portsmouth? Right, got my pen ready, Danny. Here we go. <laughs> Spare thought for Ruben Ricardo as well, the fourth official. The Paddy Lane's coming on. Is that Yengai as well? Cassini Yengai. Mercedes gone off for Paddy Lane. Number 25, Kamara coming on as well. Some booms are ringing out yeah, here. Matt Ritchie's going off, isn't yeah. he? A send off from the Sunderland fans. Severa as well making weight. Severa coming off. There's a whole lot in here as well. Oh, Mahoney came on as well. We'll get it all confirmed on your screen. I think it might have been. All change in Fratton Park. Scoreline hasn't, though. <laughs> we should say that get to the hour mark and make a, a change or two. Well, get the hour for John Mocenio. Try and get his side back into this game some way. Kamara, who's just come on. Sitting as a kind of holding midfielder, but the cell, isn't it? You know, try and get some there. goals. That's the end guy. Ballard, get the head there. Lane gets something on it, goes all the way through. It's on the cross, wasn't it? It was O'Mahony, final substitute to come on. Oh, you've got to give the, the Portsmouth fans some credit. I think it's them that you can hear. Park. That's a long old journey for those Sunderland fans who've made the trip down to Fratton Park and worth every penny. This moment in time, isn't it? So far. Still half an hour left plus added time. Under. Some of the fans you can hear now behind Will Norris's goal. Yeah, I'm just thinking, we'll be just re be thinking about making a change or two. Possibly, I'm just looking at Chris Rigg on that yellow card, haven't you? Shall we remind uh, the viewers who was on the bench for Sunderland, Danny? While possibly have a bit of possession, we've got Ben Paveda, Tommy Watson. Where's that one gone? 
Sunderland's win. Yeah, he'll still snap into those challenges, Chris Rick. I said he's on that yellow card in that third goal, wasn't it? Done really well in there. Loose ball with Dozel to win it back for Sunderland. Naz Rusin on the bench, Leo Hjelda, Ben Crompton, Harrison Jones, Timo Tietroff, and also Wilson Isidore. You might see. Yeah, a few opportunities for some of the younger boys around the squad this afternoon, aren't they? And you mentioned Chris Rigg. He's the only player on a booking as well. Still only 17 years old, of course. Have to keep reminding yourself that. <laughs> Hume goes inside to Chris Rigg. Can he keep it in? He can. Roberts, who's had a brilliant day so far. Roberts. Goes again. Just shoved off the shoved ball. The Tries to continue. Gets it back. Only momentarily. Yeah, I thought Trey was just about to launch into one of those challenges then. That's a free kick. Too keen from Paddy Lane. Former Fleetwood player. Yeah, different camps there. He's frustrated, can't you? John Mussinio. This will be 3 0 down at home, obviously, against the well, side of it. Full of confidence at this moment in time in Sunderland. There's Mundell, he's one of those guys who's full of confidence at the moment, really taking his opportunity to start he's in this Sunderland side. That, yeah. Look at that. That's a yellow card as well. If he's going to pull it that blatantly. Swanson, isn't it? Frustrated. Side 3 0 down, obviously involved in that first goal, wasn't he? With the own goal, unfortunate and frustration. Remain Mundell just standing on the ball, trying to hold him off. And you see there, a piece of his shirt. That was like the Sunderland fans early in the season when it went on sale. First day it went on sale, that's trying to get hold of it in the club shop. Well, I have been reliably <laughs> informed they're restocked now, so ready to go. Yeah, well, was that a pun on purpose? <laughs> Uh, yeah, available in store and online. SFCstore.com. Would you go for a short sleeve or long sleeve yourself, Danny? I know. Well, you've well, talked as a player. Yeah, no. I, early on, I used to wear long sleeves, but then, gradually as I got older, I settled for the short sleeves. Let's see what happens here before we get back onto your fashion tips. <laughs> Brown going back to Anthony Patterson under pressure. Oh. Something. Do you still have it? Rig. Just couldn't get past Kamara. Kamara. Snapping away again, Chris Rig. Little terrier in there, isn't he? Like Kamara came in in the summer from Dortmund, previously played at PSG as well. Struggled with injuries in his career to date. He's only 19. Stretches. Comes back out to Lang. Lang swings his foot round it. Will be a corner for Portsmouth. That is well that Luca Nine. The ball comes in, just does enough to, to get enough on the first one. And goes after Lang as well. Outside Dennis Serkin. It's 
It was near post. Sirkin was there. Mundell with the second. Kamara under pressure. Mundell holds his hands up and Sunderland could break here with Patrick Roberts. Eliza Mayenda is through the middle. Can he get on the end of this? He does. Mayenda has it. Waits for the challenge. Keeps on going. Mayenda. Got support there in Job. Still trying to do it himself. Job comes across and just plays it out. Good stuff from Job. Yeah, good from Job, yeah. Snapping about in there. Yeah, just ran out of yards there, didn't he? Mayenda got doubled up on and opportunity went away. Still start singing Job's name from the Sunderland end. He's had to play a slightly different role without Dan Neal alongside him. Yeah, no, he's just sat in there, hasn't he? Tick things over. Done well again. Red situation as well. i say we were perhaps a little bit surprised. Alan Brown, it was the one who's going to play a little bit higher this afternoon. Nine deals with that one. Patrick Roberts picks it up under pressure between him and Trey Hume. Roberts goes again. Does he get pushed down? Referee says no. Oh, <laughs> substitute Leo Kelder's getting shoved off the ball there. <laughs> 70 minute mark and still no changes for Sunderland. It's one of those though as a, as a player out there. None of those lads will want to come off this afternoon enjoying it. Especially going into an international break yeah. as well. Oh, took one in the face there as he went down. Back on his feet, he's okay. Made a tough stuff, is Alan Brown. Just loading the box here now. Long throw coming in. Eight man on pack on the far side. In the meantime, I think the referee, re referee just wants to check on Alan Brown because he's yeah, so he's rubbing his face a bit. And sometimes the player's not the best person to make yeah, that no, decision. Exactly, yeah, no, exactly. Hume over there and one or two others just have a look at Alan Brown, make sure he's OK. Chance comes now for Paul Smith. Ballard gets his leg in the way. He's holding the shin there, his knee. Dan Ballard. Is he OK? Or do you want the physio on? He said no. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, ball come in there, scramble, and then, yeah, great challenge. And Callum Lang, isn't it? Dan Ballard committed, gets the block in. Back on his feet, organising. Lang, charged down, Trey Hume. Kamara under pressure. Oh, Rig. <laughs> he gambled. So did Kamara. Yeah, trying to sneak up on him there, Chris Rig. A good shift in again, isn't he? Getting about the pitch, Chris Rig. It's a pleasure to watch. Patterson nonchalantly chests it down. And those minutes tick by. Still no changes. Second. Squeezed off the ball, referee players on. Oh, it was on as well as not too much on the pass. Is there a change happening down below us? Sounds like one. Well, cameraman's not really helping us out well, here. Well, there's that goal back now. Let's have a look there, see. Yes, he's off the pitch, but he's, he's still classed as being in play. There, I think it was Dizel, wasn't it? Keeper there as well. He's onside, Alan Brown. It's Romain Mundell well, making way. Brilliant from Romain Mundell. We're going to see a, a debut as well. 
from Wilson Isidore. Isidore, I think Isidore. Isidore. I'm going to go for Isidore, yeah. yeah, I think so. I think it's a straight swap on that far side. Oh, there's Jan Pavera. Pavera. Debuts all round. Oh, thanks we're for helping not, us out, yeah, the cameraman. Say, we're not sure. Uh, Sterling, Sterling stuff there. Down That's Patrick Roberts as well there, look, just right. sat alongside, remain nimble. Straight Chins. swaps on the flanks. Two flanks. Meanwhile, Portsmouth at the other end with Lang. Did we get the corner there? Well, yes, it is. Fourth of the afternoon. Jan Pavera, a debutante performance from him. And also, Wilson Isidore. In swinger again. Job with the first contact. Pavera. Mayenda. Mayenda. Trying to bring in Isidore. Yeah, another chance on the counter attack, wasn't it? Just couldn't quite get it out of his feet there, Mayenda. Maybe starting to look a little bit leggy. Good shift himself this afternoon. Zirkin, Isidore, it's his first touch for Sunderland, goes again and gets the free kick. Oh, no, he do doesn't. The ref put the whistle to yeah, his mouth did. there, wave play on. Not enough Changed in that. His mind. Sam Allison, Paddy Lane, inside, easily picked up by Job, who's got a man on. He did a shout from his teammates there, he does really well to keep possession for Sunderland. So does Chris Rigg as he pulls away with it. Rigg. Brings in Jan Paveda. Paveda for Sunderland. Gets the corner. The yeah, we're going to see a few of these counter attacks, I think, now for Sunderland on the break. See fresh legs on either side. May end at top end of the pitch. Centre back still coming forward. Get the score sheet. Balls going in around the championship will give you them all in the post game program. You need your hashtags as well. Use that hashtag Ask Danny. Tell us what you think about the game today, the transfer window. Ball comes in. It was Ballard, I think, got the contact. Yeah, he's felt that as well. Is the door. Paveda. Paveda opens up for him. Brown collects. Pavera. A word on Patrick Roberts again. Yeah, another good outing for Patrick, wasn't it? Some good build-up play in the first half, linking up Chris Reagan, Trey Hume as well, getting beyond him. It's Wilson is the door. Looks composed play. on the ball. Finds Chris Rigg with a good pass. Some of the fans enjoying this behind that goal. has gone out wide on the left. Of course, I mean Mundell put another good performance in on yeah, the left Yeah, got himself a goal again, hasn't he? Yeah, two and two. As well, you know, mention Patrick, it was almost the assist for the assist, wasn't it? Again for him, you know, went on that right foot, fired a lovely ball across. I'm saying Mienda didn't get himself the goal, but he'll get the assist for it. now from the Sunderland fans behind the goal to our right hand side 
Nice turn from Job. Takes out three players with that turn. Rig. Pulled back by Kamara. It's going to be a yellow yeah, card as card, well. Yeah. Still good energy in there. Said lovely again from Job. Takes it on the half turn, doesn't he? Into Chrissy Riggs' feet there. Good touch across his man. Say Kamara got a piece of him. There's an announcement in the ground there. It will be their final substitution. And this is a head injury. And that's Harvey Blair coming on. Number 29. He's a forward. Calvin Lang, wasn't it, coming off for him? Lang's had a quiet afternoon. Hume stands over it, crosses right footed. Ballard's there. There's a hand in, definitely made contact with the ball there. Rig caught in possession. It's Isidore with yeah, the know, I, I was appealing it here on there. You were. <laughs> Looked like a hand, didn't it? I think it's Dan Bollard gets his head on it and then stray arm up in the yeah, air. That's a stray arm, yeah. Gilvey still going. Oh, Brown does enough. That's sloppy from Trey. Beda tries to get at it as Kamara brings it out. It's ten minutes of this game left, Danny. I'm very yeah. aware of that, but Sunderland have find themselves three 0 up without playing as well as they have in previous yeah. games. Yeah, sometimes play within yourselves. They will have expected more from Portsmouth, to be honest, as well. Um, yeah, but you know, prime example. Look at the goals, really. The counter attack goal. Sometimes that's what it's all about. On the on their way trips really so soak the pressure up I said earlier you know we've had third least amount of uh, possession so far this season 43% but it's when you've got the ball and what you're doing with it and at this moment in time we're punishing sides on the counter attack and moving the ball quick at times looking well organized behind the ball as well you know lads at the back rarely troubled this afternoon have they Luke O'Neill and Ballard coming in this afternoon and then getting to that stage in the game now, 10 minutes to go, your three goals to the good, and those lads at the back will be thinking and guarantee you a clean sheet again, boys. You know, I think it's history for the club, isn't it? Winning four on the bounce and, and four clean sheets on the bounce. That's the aim now, this last 10 minutes of the game. You know, obviously, at the top end of the pitch, you still can you cap it off with a meander goal or a goal on the debut for Pervader or Isidore? Trying to show us the attendance there, just too, sh just a little bit too slow there, EFL cameraman. And holds 20,899 does Fratton Park. I think they might pence the, the garden shed song coming out, but no, they pack in there to, as we said earlier, compact ground, isn't it? Get behind their team, but. The yeah, corner. corner. Well, it's been a, a difficult afternoon, one or two leaving there. But I think credit to them that they'll have expected it coming back up this season. Yeah, they've had a decent start against some tough teams, you know, say leads away. And obviously, Luton here managed to keep a clean sheet, take the nil nil. But at this moment, yeah, they've come up against the Sunderland side who are full of confidence, good young legs in the side getting around the pitch, just been too much for them this afternoon. This would be their first defeat of the season in the league. Yep. And we come from top of the table, Sunderland, all being well. Floated in, keeper gets enough on it, only as far as Isidore. Isn't it? Take the foul, yeah. Doesn't come off, bring him down. Marco Mahoney just joined the club. There's 
one of those mornings when we were scrambling for squad numbers, wasn't it? Yeah, following the end of the transfer window. Ended up being quite a busy day, didn't it, generally? Yeah, it was, yeah. I think, obviously, I mean, I say I, I turned off early on, really, but I know there was one or two Sunderland fans thinking, are we, are we doing any business? It was sort of quiet from our point of view, and then obviously they put a few sort of social media posts out later on, didn't they? Couple through the door later on. Pompey, you know, changing shape. I think meant to a back three. And it really worked off. You know, make those four changes. Sometimes it can have an instant impact on it. Get yourself a goal and get the crowd going again. But it just didn't happen for Portsmouth. drawing board for that man. I'm thinking about another change. I probably, I know I mentioned earlier on, Chris Rigg, I think he's had a fantastic game again, but just five minutes to go, don't want to miss time and a challenge, picking up a red card, Harrison Jones on there, on the bench there, can slot in for him last five minutes, maybe. saying now he's got a decision to make I know we've got the break now Dan Neal comes back into it doesn't he after his suspension yeah Brown's been excellent this afternoon Pervera has gone ahead of Rig Rig floats one in towards the back post Isidore's there does enough to Kept keep it in, it in. wow <laughs> just took it back so easily glided back into, into did, shape didn't there he? didn't he regained possession Veda. Rig on his left foot. Ooh. Oh, it almost drops up Paveda. Rig will settle for the corner. Yeah, just opened up for him, found a yard, didn't he? Just on his favoured left foot, looking for that far corner. Nice to get the block in Portsmouth. And just waiting for that final whistle now, and it is going to be a late change. Rusin. I'd imagine Meander, straight swap. Let's see. I'm not going to make it just yet, Danny. Pervera was with the corner. Very high. Just find Sirkin. Still try and service the box with something, but... What to do from the throw in. Final four minutes of normal time. Oh, no. Take the throw, and yeah, change is going to happen now. Yeah, there's me under there making way. Yeah, I think he's had a pretty decent afternoon. I think he's mixed his game up well. He, he's got hold of the ball for us once start the second half. Wasn't the ball well into him, pinned his man well, got us up the pitch, played his part in uh, Remain Mundell's goal as well. He's had a decent afternoon. He'd be frustrated that he hasn't got the goal, really. I say he played his part in the first one as well, didn't he, really, with the with the strike and then Alan Brown just towed that one away from him but no I think he's had a decent afternoon Meander more minutes for Nazari Rusin here he is Isidore Rusin Sirkin. That's surely a foul. He got the card as well, wasn't it? Swanson. <laughs> I enjoyed that there. He, he had a couple of looks at him there, didn't he? Just showed him the ball a couple of times. See there. Whoa. Then he goes again, and then just too strong for him, too sharp. Dennis gets the wrong side of him.
Don't forget, you can have your say on the game or Sunderland's start of the season. Anything SAFC related, use the hashtag Ask Danny. Join us in the post game programme. Myself and Dan will be back in the sports bar to discuss the game and anything you like. Ball's popped in. Ooh. Second on the spin. Oh. Over the top. <laughs> Yeah, decent hit, just gets underneath it as it drops down. Dennis Erkin on the on the turn. See it back now. Ball in, decent ball in from Alan Brown. I think it's Dan Bollard making the nuisance of himself and then yeah. It's there for Dennis, isn't it? Can't just keep it down though. this afternoon see time and time again he gets into those positions read situations well as a centre back and they'll be equally as happy with that clean sheet again I mean I, I can't recall Anthony Patterson making a save this season um, has he had to make a save really that's it going back certainly in this game here he hasn't really has he that header from Ogilvy barely a save is it last game Foster I think had one from 25 yards second half you know could have thrown his cap on it but now it's been comfortable and you know, if he has another 40 or so of them, he'll be delighted. Cardiff away, he had a header, didn't he? Yeah. Early on, tipped it past his post. Did that hit the ref? Yes. I don't think it's going to make much difference, but brings it back. the 90th minute some of the fans singing the top of the league and they it's been a long time since some of the fans can celebrate a couple of weeks at top of the championship possible opportunity for Perveda Norris has come a long way out of his area they can nick it back here Sunderland Blair big challenge from Alan Brown it's been a good performance from him yeah would he be up there for your man of the match again it's a difficult one isn't it the candidates all over the pitch for Sunderland again oh far post free oh oh, oh no. nine oh no in his own net well the Portsmouth fans will enjoy that but the Sunderland defense oh, feel for him as well yeah good afternoon again Luke O'Nine look at him yeah devastated just have a look here now let's have a look Dennis has to come narrow, nobody picking up the far post and then yeah, he's unsure what's behind him there, Luke 9 The game has got a second yeah, over. Oh. Four clean sheets in the bounce as well in that manner. Disappointing for the boys. Oh. I'm just saying, we? Anthony Patterson has had a save to make. And he can't keep that out the net, no chance for him there, rooted on his line. Ballard caught late. Yengi, just away from him, just stands on his left, his left ankle I think he does, holding his shin there, Damn, but I thought he stood on his left ankle. Young in the book. Yeah, at this point for the lads at the backs, one of them later on they'll get back on the bus, they'll have a bit of a bit of a joke about it with Luke and a bit of banter, but it'll be sold at the moment a, though. Yeah, it's just a bit of a sickener, isn't it? When you look at you know, Pompey having trouble with us really all afternoon, as we said, and then just at the last minute or so to, to lose the clean sheet. the final minute of added time the most important thing is that 100% win record is in place it's been a great yeah. start for Regis Labrit in English football so probably trying to get a little bit of urgency into them now see if they can nick another one 
Here's Brown. Ten seconds left of the suggested added time. Many Portsmouth fans have already left. Blair. Again, Luke O'Neill, excellent. Goal Another kick. That yeah, might be it. <laughs> just having a little bit of friendly banter with the Portsmouth fans behind the goal. As I say, he take that unfortunate error out of his game there. He's been excellent this afternoon, Luke O'Neill. He's still playing on here. Yeah, three minutes might be added on. The referee's still playing here. Delivery to the back post, Ballard gets something on it. Still in play, Paddy Lane crosses it. Is the referee going to let the corner go in? No, no that's it. it. Ballard taunts the Portsmouth <laughs> fans, but Sunderland continue with their 100% record, Danny. Yeah, excellent 12 in 12, isn't it, for the boys? And thoroughly deserved it. I thought it was a slow burner, wasn't it, this afternoon? Took our time to get going. We had moments in the first half, and obviously get the goal, fortunate own goal from our point of view, wasn't it? to get us in front but then setting off thought we controlled the game really well moved the ball well goals on the counter attack and there with a big smile on his face Regis Lebrie and that one there a little bit disappointed Luke 9 you know he'll be thinking about it on the bus on the way back but overall he was excellent alongside many others in that white shirt this afternoon and yeah. they go into the break top of the pile Sunland. Certainly do, and they're just going to go make their way down to those Sunderland fans behind the goal. They've been vocal all afternoon, and they've been rewarded after a long trip down to the south coast with a 3-1 victory down at Fratton Park. We'll be back after the break to discuss it all and bring you all the scores from around the doors as well. Final score, down at Fratton Park, Portsmouth 1, Sunderland 3.